We do still see some store, a lot of stores that are doing fabulous. Um, But Doug, what kind of advice would you give to some of the independents out there that are struggling at this point? I mean, they're kind of like, what can I do? Yeah, they have, if they have not gone through sort of the, the checklist of things that might be obvious, but maybe not obvious. I mean, for, for you guys, I mean, there's probably a, 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 not a, literal maybe even a literal checklist like have you talked to your wholesaler have you talked to your buying group have you looked at your psao contracts what kind of you know your inventory turnover have Mm -hmm. you looked at your staffing um are there some you know staffing changes you could make that would you know still allow you to provide services do you you know you haven't charged for delivery for your entire um history of, of business Everyone else in the world charges for <laughs> delivery now. Um, Grubhub, DoorDash, yeah. consumers are used to it. In fact, they're probably shocked when they're not charged. And I know, I know. I mean, I was a long time ago in the pharmacy, and we charged for delivery. You know, 30 years ago, 25 years ago, when I was practicing, um, and, you know, people paid it. It was you know two dollars, two fifty, right. something like that. It wasn't a lot, but um, things that you've given away for free are there things do you need to start charging for those things or do you need to stop giving them away for free yeah i I think some of the big things personnel you know talking to your wholesaler talking to your buying group looking at your psao contracts those would be probably some of the big areas Mm -hmm. i would look at first operating hours you know do you need to be open till eight o'clock on on saturday no, no, close at five. Do they need to be open on Saturday afternoon? I mean, it's just, it's, it's, right. it's, a, it's amazing the number of things that you've just mentioned and then some that many pharmacists don't even look at or recognize that the, the, the impact that these things have on the key performance indicators of these pharmacies. And we're constantly pushing these pharmacists to review all these things that move the needle, like payroll, like how well are you buying, what what is your uh, I, I know you've been with this buying group forever and ever and ever, but you need to be reviewing your contracts and looking at what other options there are. Do you need to be involved in clinical services? Do you need to be looking at some of the things that CPESN is working on in conjunction with NCPA? Things of this nature. It's just there's so many things out there that sometimes they just feel so overwhelmed they don't have time to do it. But frankly, they don't have an opportunity right. not to because it means survival in many, many of these cases. You're exactly right. And I, and I almost turned the question back to you guys. And you just mentioned it because you see, you know, you see the books of these pharmacies. And so oh, boy. what would be your top five things that you would say, hey, if you could just look at five things, these are the five things that most often is going to you know, move the needle the most. Yeah. How well you buy yeah. is huge. How well you buy is a single number one item. Payroll is number two. Which Reconciling rent, receivables, they got to know. Oh, my oh my Lord. If, if been we could just get pharmacies <laughs> to reconcile and, and work with their third-party reconciliation companies and deal with perpetual inventories uh, and do cycle counts periodically uh, to look at the cash that's sitting on their shelves um, and, and look at some of their rent contracts they're paying per square footage. It's just amazing the things that can move the needle that we see out there, Doug, that uh, just so many of them are, are not doing. And you're right. I mean, we're looking at those balance sheets first and foremost because everything on that balance sheet affects the P&L. And we, we're trying to make sure that they're optimizing their tax situations, which can mean nothing but cash coming into the business properly handled. Um, but it's, it's, it's a never-ending process of trying to work with these guys and ladies to, to bring profitability and cash flow to these businesses. And, it, and obviously, it's just a, the, those that are diversifying their revenue and finding other yeah. ways other than just filling scripts are, yeah. it's a definitely a positive. No question um, about that. And and there's so many new things out there. Infusion is a big thing we're seeing in today's mm-hmm. marketplace. Non-sterile compounding done right is big. Uh, long-term care at home, huge issue. Just on the call with somebody just looking at that. For the, and, and, and they've already... <laughs> They've already determined that there's a ten thousand dollar a month incremental gross profit that they can pick up from just moving to that program. 
I mean, my goodness, why have you already done it? I mean, it's just <laughs> incredible the, the lack of movement in some pharmacies. And it's just those things that make us beat our head against that brick wall behind me sometimes. Well, and there's, just, still, just you know, there's still a lot of um, stores that haven't gotten into compliance and adherence and packaging yeah. and things like that. And so yeah. we're definitely, you know, pushing people to do that if they're not already. But well, exactly. it's a big difference. You mentioned just it can be overwhelming. And so I, I can... I can appreciate that. I mean, there's just so many things to do. So, I mean, it's, I, I guess for that, I would say the adage of, you know, eating the elephant one bite at a time rather than yep. try to do all five things. You know, this month I'm going to focus on if it's buying or I'm going to focus on my personnel and just, again, to do that one at a step at a time. NCPA is going to be launching a program. And I think you guys are aware of this. Yes. Um, the, the core. The core program. Yeah, we're involved mm -hmm. with that. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Um, so that's an effort to, for, for the type of owners we're talking about, who both the kind who are overwhelmed and also the overachievers, but who want to do even better, but it's for someone for personal leadership, for team leadership, and importantly, the things we're talking about today, the, the nuts and bolts operations of your business, um, the marketing, but you know, the financial nuts. The, the financial that's, management that's part is the part about. we're going to be playing in that. Yeah. You're absolutely right. It's a great program you guys have put together, and it's just now launching, and uh, we we wish it the most success with that and, and happy to participate with that. No question yeah, about I that. I mean, we hate to toot our own horn, but, you know, whoever does it, you have to have up-to-date real-time numbers in your financials to know how your pharmacy is even operating. To make the changes that you're mentioning, um, you don't know if your payroll is too high unless – you have that information and it's That's correct. Right. Yeah. You need so it's so important. Right. Yeah. Yeah. That's exactly. exactly. 